Okay, let's keep going. And in the fovea area, they make the bipolar cells, gangly cells, shine away so the light can directly hit the rods and cones. And in the fovea, it's, it's, it's almost all, all cones. So it gives you the color vision and also the sharp vision because the cones are have higher resolution than, than rods. So that's the slide show you the fovea area. And in, in humans, we have to uh, organize the retina this way so the light will hit, actually hit the ganglia cell first, and then the bipolar, then the rods and cones. And those ganglia cells axon will combine together, so we have an up, optic disc. So it's actually not a very uh, smart design. And for the FYI, uh, the, the octopus Actually, they have a better eye design than we do. They, they put the photoreceptor outside. And because of this kind of design, the axon will go into the posterior part. So they don't have a blind spot. They actually have a better eye design than we do. And let's talk about the rods and cones. These are the photoreceptors, so they have the photopigments. The, the signal this is the light will hit the photopigments and the photopigment will do some response and change the structure and start the signal transduction pathway. And this is the table compared the rods and cones. I will leave it to you. And in the fovea, this is the area with almost all cones. There's no rod. So fovea, this is the area with the sharp vision. The red one means the, the cones. But once you start to walk away from the fovea, you found the number of cones significantly drop, and you start to have a lot of uh, rods. So the peripheral, peripheral vision, you have plenty of rods, and that's the optic deck, so you have nothing. And then you, you still have the, the rods outside. So the peripheral vision, you don't have uh, good resolution, so you use your peripheral vision to detect the object. If you want to see clearly, you have to move your fovea to the target. And also in the neural network, the cones to the bipolar to the ganga is almost one to one. So because of that, its receptive field is pretty small. And small receptive field, we talk about that in the skin, small receptive field means high resolution. And the rods have high convergence, so a lot of rods will combine together to a few bipolar cells, will all combine together to one ganglia cell. So each ganglia cell connect to the rods, they have a big receptive field, and big receptive field is low resolution, because when the lights come, they hit here, they hit here, even though they hit different rods, it's the same ganglia cell response. And all your brain have is the actual potential from the ganglia cell. So your brain will think, well, it's the same spot being hit. So big receptive field, high convergence means low resolution. And there's another reason to explain why your raw system uh, it has low resolution. You have to use the cone system to have high resolution. In your full, all fovea is its all cone system. And your rods and cones have the photopigments, and they use different pigments. They they respond to the light. So the rod system used the uh, rhodopsin and the cones used the photoset. We're going to use the rhodopsin to explain the mechanism, how they transfer the light into the signal transduction inside the cell. So they will do the conformational change, structure change. When the light hits and light does not hit, they will change. Uh, in organic chemistry, they call it cis and trans. So if the group will, will, will turn will cause the structure change. And what happened is when they have no light, actually their channel, ion channel open a lot. And when ion channel open, sodium gonna flow in because sodium is high outside, low inside. So a lot of sodium flow in, inside is depolarized. And it turned out inside is depolarized. So it's a big current. So we actually call it dark current. So the rods and cones, they, their response is when there's no light, they have a huge depolarization and create a dark current. So when there's no light, those photo, um, those uh, iron channel open a lot. 
And when the ion channel opens, ions flow in, so inside is depolarized. When inside is depolarized, in the synapse part, they're going to open a lot of voltage-gated calcium channel. And when the calcium channel open, calcium flow in. So calcium flow in will trigger neurotransmitter release. So when there's no light, a lot of neurotransmitter release. It's totally the update as we, we learned. They, they don't follow the rule. So when there's no light, a lot of neurotransmitter, they call dark current. And we definitely need somebody to reverse it back. That's why we have the bipolar cell. Bipolar cell's job is to, to reverse. So when they receive a lot of neurotransmitter, they release nothing. So when you reach the ganglia cell, ganglia cells are the one to generate action potential. When they uh, release no neurotransmitter to the ganglia cells, it will generate no action potential. So when the signal goes to the brain, it's still normal. When there's no light, no action potential, because all the brain has is action potential. But they need bipolar cell to reverse it back because of, of the dark currents. The rods and cones totally just functionally uh, the update way. When there's no light, they release a lot of current. And this tells you the signal transduction. If the light comes, it will hit the photopigments. And once it activates the photopigments, it will shut down this ion channel. And we shut down the ion channel, the cells is hyperpolarized. So that's what happens when you have light. When you have light, inside is hyperpolarized. When it's hyperpolarized, there's no voltage-gated calcium channel open, so they release no neurotransmitter. And bipolar cells' job is to reverse the signal back, so when they receive no neurotransmitter, they release a lot of neurotransmitter. And this neurotransmitter go to the ganglia cells. Ganglia cells generate a lot of action potential to the brain. So when the brain receives the action potential, when there are plenty of light, they receive a lot of action potential. So it goes back to normal. And you're able to see color because you have three different kinds of cones. You have the blue cone, the green cone, and the red cone. The red cone is actually not that red. If you look at the wavelength, it's optimized wavelength is close to the yellow range, but we like to call it the red cone. And when we compare the human's eye with other animals' eyes, well, human's eye is good, not perfect. We have three kinds of cones. Compared with dog, dog only have two kinds of cones. So some people say the dog is colorblind. They still see certain range of spectrum. They have two kinds of cones. Uh, compared with birds, birds have four different kinds of cones. And it makes sense because that's the visual system, is the main system they, they rely on. So they have a better eye than we do. And this little guy, this FYI, this little guy called mantis shrimp, uh, is actually have 12 different kinds of cones. So his world is beautiful. So that's humans, we have three kinds of cones, and this mantis shrimp have 12. You start from the UV light and go all the way to the infrared. If you miss one of the cones, you are colorblind. And it doesn't mean you see black and white. You, you usually miss one kind of cone, and usually you miss uh, the red cone. So the colorblind has like to use the, the red backgrounds and use the green later. Uh, because if you miss the red cone, you won't be able to identify this. Uh, this is 74. If you, are, you have normal vision, you should be able to see 74. And if you are colorblind, I show you this picture, it looks like this. So you still see certain range of color. It's like I, t I take the, the red color away. I give you the yellow and the blue pink, uh, blue ink as to the paint. So you can still create a certain spectrum and you just miss the red component in this color point. It's genetic. And eventually the signal, human, our two eyes are in the front. So we have the binocular uh, vision. This gives you a 3D vision. So your 3D vision comes from the two eyes. You, your, your, the image will go to the left eye, go to the right eye, and it will have a small angle difference. And the image will go to your visual cortex. So your brain can use uh, the angle difference between the left and the right eye to compare, to recreate the depth perception. So the depth perception is recreated by your brain. 
and that's critical for all the predator including human because we need to know how far we are away from the from the prey from the object so most of the uh, the objects they are in this field the by binocular vision so you can close your left eye close your right eye if you, if you can still see the object they, they are in here and uh, this small area they are in the left eye only and this small they are in the right eye only so there's and you can use, only use one eye to see them and the information will go through your thalamus from the thalamus and will go to the the visual cortex and being processed in your visual cortex okay that's it